Many of the migrants are heading to Germany because of its open border policies. President Obama heads to Boston today to take part in a Labor Day breakfast. He's also expected to sign an executive order requiring paid sick leave for employees of federal contractors. Tom Brady talking to reporters Sunday for the first time since his Deflategate suspension was overturned. A lot of guys in this locker room have worked really hard to get to this point, and uh, you know, so have I, and I'm excited to uh, you know, be able to go out there and do it. The Patriots open the NFL season Thursday night against the Steelers. Fox News, we report, you decide. There's more to Fox News Radio than meets the ear. Go behind the headlines and join the conversation on the hottest stories of the day on the Fox News Radio Facebook page. Be a part of the Fox News Radio Facebook fan community. Post comments and tell us your opinions. See behind-the-scenes photos and videos and post your reactions to the stories that matter to you. Click the like button on Facebook and connect with breaking news and features like Fox in the Fast Lane, House Call for Help, and more. Go to Facebook.com slash Fox News Radio. Weeknights, we're busting out a brand new lineup. First, market fraud, government abuse, corruption. At five, nothing's off limits on money with Melissa Francis. Then, from bloated bank fees to consumer scams. At six, Jerry's exposing the issues impacting your wallet. Plus, get smart market insight and trusted analysis you won't find anywhere else. At seven, Lou Dobbs is all business. And the first and last name in business, Cavuto. Shedding light on the biggest stories, making headlines at eight. Only on the Fox Business Network, giving you the power to prosper. Ocala Aviation now has opportunities for flight instructors. Wait, hold on, Brad, is this correct? You're looking for instructors, not students? Actually, we're looking for both. Well, that's descriptive. Well, I need flight instructors because we're now affiliated with a major university and can offer four-year degrees, plus we're also approved to work directly with VA students. Okay, so a degree in what, and what's a VA student? Well, it's a bachelor's degree in aeronautics, which includes a commercial pilot's license, and there's financial aid available. By VA students, I mean veterans. They now have access to new benefits to pay for flight training. Okay, so you have new opportunities for new students. What about the instructor side of it? New students, we need more instructors. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So, if anyone out there is a flight instructor, I want to encourage them to come see me. And if they're not an instructor but have their commercial license, we can help them become an instructor. So, they get their instructor license and have a job, too. Exactly. So, you got a lot going on. The VA, the college, and now hiring instructors and future instructors, too. Yep. So, now, can we get the commercial started? Already ahead of you. Call Brad to get your adventure started today at Ocala Aviation, 861-7484. Are you wasting hundreds or thousands of dollars on termite retreat fees? If you're not with Turner Pest Control, you probably are. Turner Pest Control offers the industry's only termite and pest control package that never charges retreat fees, ever. You can get started today for only $99. This is a value of $500 or more. This includes treatments, installation of monitoring stations, quarterly pest control, and a lifetime guarantee, all for an unbelievable low $99. Even if you have another pest control provider, visit turnerpest.com to find out how you can avoid paying those high termite retreat fees what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. (laughs) Women are more likely to feel stressed at night than men, and here's why. Because even after working all day, women typically come home to chores and childcare, while men kick back with a beer and watch TV, right? The way we feel when we indulge in a forbidden food, like a Philly cheesesteak, has a major impact on our ability to stick with our diet. Pet ownership, it has been linked to less stress, lower blood pressure, and better heart health. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. This is James Snyder inviting you to join me each Sunday morning at 9.30 for Sunday Joy on 1370 AM 96.3 FM. Your source for the number one sports weekend, Fox Sports, only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM. 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Nice looking Monday morning. It is a day off for many of you, so enjoy the day off, and we'll hopefully provide you something entertaining and 
just just fun to listen to. I hope we got it's Labor Day, so we want to talk about jobs. Of course, it's mm-hmm. an important part of today. We could talk about the history of Labor Day a little bit. I don't want to do that too much. But what, one of the fun things too is uh, I, I want to talk about some jobs. And if you can tell me a job that you'd like to know the average salary in America, mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's what you would make if you were if you were working here. Yeah, exactly. You know, Cal- That's okay. right. Okay. <laughs> uh, in, in, in all fairness, all small towns pretty much have this the same deal. You know. You don't, don't yeah, but much. there are some companies like Lockheed Martin, uh, Microdyne paid extremely well when they were here, and so they, uh, you know, but they, they also had uh, factories in different states, so they all had you know that kind of a bar. Uh, so I was watching, uh, I was watching a, you know, what do you want to say, uh, like a, a YouTube video last night, and it was about uh, this train line uh, that that goes from uh, Chicago to Seattle, and it's it's called the. Um, Empire Builder Amtrak train line. It's a okay. it's a passenger train line uh-huh. that takes people to to from Seattle uh, from uh, Chicago to Seattle and, and back. Mm-hmm. And it's called the Empire Builder because the guy who started it, I can't remember his name, but he was he was given the uh, the moniker the Empire Builder. He mm-hmm. he was down set and determined that he was going to have a railroad that went from Chicago to Seattle, not because he wanted to have his businesses sell in Seattle, but because he wanted his businesses to sell in Asia. Uh-huh. And Seattle was the port of choice uh, to ship his things to. So he, because a uh, horse and, and wagon couldn't cover the terrain, which included the Rocky Mountains. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody wow. said, you're never going to build a railroad that goes over the Rocky Mountains. And you, you got to see this This uh, special. It was very, very cool. But anyway, so in addition to uh, the history of the, uh, the, the rail line called the Empire Builder mm-hmm. line, there was the, the the modern day use of this line. Now that once it was established, you, people started using it as a passenger line. Of course, it was a freight line. I think it still is a freight line. But mm-hmm. anyway, so um, they were talking about the the conductor. The conductor has to. Uh, here's, here's a job for you. It's a twelve hour a day job. Uh, I don't know where he is the other twelve hours. I don't know if he goes six hours one way and then six hours back, so mm-hmm. he's home. Well, yeah. That would make sense, right? I think so. So I don't. I don't I really know. So. But anyway, so it's a twelve-hour-a-day job. He can't drive the train for more than twelve hours or operate the train. The engineer. With, the conductor. Oh, the conductor operates the train. Is, am I right? Do I do I have the right name? No, you just said you you talked about the conductor. And oh, who drives the train? The engineer. The engineer yeah. drives the train. Yeah. Oh, I thought the conductor drove the train. No, I think he's he's the guy that you know goes out when they had a caboose, you know, to make sure everything's great. Oh, okay. In the back and stuff. Okay. Okay. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just. I'm. You watch the special, so well, they, no, they, no. they might have a different name. I Whoa, don't let me let me let me look this up. Who? What do you okay. call? What do you call a train driver? Okay. You call a train driver. This is important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I thought the conductor. If, if if it's a passenger train, they make right, right, right. passengers and things. And what do you call a train driver? <laughs> is engineer? Okay, it's an engineer. So you're okay. right. Okay. Okay. Well, it has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with my story here. I just had the wrong name. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so the engineer then, the engineer, the guy who drives the train, mm-hmm. he can't. First of all, he's got, he can't work more than 12 hours, and he can't be away from the tr- controls more than 30 seconds. This was very wow. interesting. It sounds very, interesting. I'm, I'm assuming there's more than one engineer, because if he has to use the bathroom, obviously it's going to be more than 30 seconds. Right, exactly. So if he's not controlling the train, because let's say you're on a straightaway and there's no reason to change anything, right? Mm-hmm. There's a button that just you push the button just to say, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. If if that button doesn't get pushed, the train will stop itself, and then he's got some splaining to do. Yeah. All right. Wow. So anyway, I was watching the this thing, and it was puzzles. it was pretty interesting. So, all right. So an Amtrak engineer. Now that I got the right name, mm-hmm. makes. Are you ready for this? Yes. On na- a national average, seventy five thousand eight hundred sixty seven dollars a year. Oh gosh, it doesn't uh, seem much in today's day and age and all but that's you're driving a train good. you're driving a train 12 hours a day yeah. you, you bring home $75,000 that's the average gosh I think the lowest paid according to this which is a, we- a website called glassdoor.com and I want to use this site okay just for fun the lowest paid Amtrak engineer gets 58000 the highest paid Amtrak engineer gets 107000 wow so the average is $75,867 gosh so tell nice. me, tell me a, a job that you want to know what, what the average is that they make. Just give me a, give me a job. Oh, okay, a fireman. 
a firefighter. Okay, fire fighter. Okay, let's see what it says. The average firefighter in America makes fifty four thousand two hundred fifty two dollars. Oh gosh, that's more than Ocala firefighters make. Yes. A lot more. The highest paid firefighter in America makes $83,000. The lowest paid gets $35,000. Wow. How about a consultant? I mean, is there a general thing for a consultant right across the board? I'm going to put it in here. I don't know. You might have to say specifically what kind of... Well, consultant salaries, it came up... um, Sixty-two thousand is the low. Four one hundred forty-two thousand is the high. Eighty-eight thousand three hundred five dollars to be a consultant. Gosh, isn't that? I something? don't know what, what consultant for what. Yeah. But anyway, I've known radio consultants who made more than anybody on the staff at the radio station. Yeah. I knew radio consultants yep. who were paid by the owners of the radio station mm-hmm. these exorbitant fees, mm-hmm. <laughs> and yet. The radio station themselves would say, oh, we don't have any money for a race. And they it would pay these consultants. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I had nothing to do with any of that. But I've, always, no. I've always been in small time, but no. I'm just saying in some of the bigger stations. Yeah. Give me another. Give me another. A sportscaster. A sportscaster. Yeah. <laughs> sportscaster. Sportscaster. Let's see what a sportscaster makes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't. There's no. Uh, there's nothing here. Oh, well, they're off the board. Let me let, wait. Wait. Let me let me change. At, at least put sports broadcaster. Oh, okay. Because it could be uh, just the way I typed or it in there. News anchor, I guess. Uh, that's different than a sports broadcaster. Well, I actually, I want to save that for when we have Galen on. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, do that. But sports broadcaster. Okay, it's not on there. Did you mean sports broadcaster? Yes, I did. <laughs> sports broadcaster. Did you? Did you mean job titles matching sports broadcaster? <laughs> well, yes, I did. Of course, I did. What are you talking about? A winery worker. A winery worker. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have interesting jobs. All right, a winery worker. Let's see, let's see what they make. <laughs> Without the it's eight. in here. Okay, it's in here. Okay. Forty five thousand six hundred seventy five dollars is the average. Oh, okay. Twenty four thousand is the low end. Sixty eight thousand is the highest paid in in America. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. The winery worker. Oh, Forty five thousand. You think Lake Ridge Winery? Well, twenty four thousand yeah. is probably what they're making down there. <laughs> yeah, in <laughs> Lake, Florida, at Lake Ridge. <laughs> California would be. All there. right. Uh, Who else? Who are you curious about? Oh, gosh. Um, Do you have any curiosities? Hmm. How about a mayor? What's, what's the average okay. of a mayor? The average okay. job for a mayor. <laughs> okay. It, it breaks it down into cities, so you have to go by city. Okay. Let's put a Cali mayor. I think we know what he makes, right? Yeah, because the Cudahy mayor got a lot of money up. At, oh, he I did? mean, that was his job. He, oh, it doesn't have Ocala mayor. That's a, a suburb of Milwaukee, and that was his job. And so he got paid really good. He didn't have to have another job. Maybe a congressman. <laughs> a congressman, let's see. They don't have congressmen. How do they come? Well, it's because they're exorbitant. Oh, I see. They, you have to go by each congressman. Each congressman is different. Oh, <laughs> hmm. Now that's a Ted curiosity. Yoho. Let me put Ted Yoho. Okay. See how much he makes. Yeah, we haven't heard from him lately. I don't ever hear from him. No, we don't. I've no, never heard from not him. Not even any more press releases. From him. All right. So anyway, He's that that was fun. Just it. give me one more, one more job time. <laughs> something, something uh, veterinarian. Oh, Vet- veterinarian. There you go. Veterinarian. That sounds good. My brother could tell, tell me. Mm-hmm. Yep. The average national average eighty two thousand five hundred eighty dollars. Mm-hmm. The low end sixty six thousand. The high end one hundred twenty two thousand. How about a kite maker? A kite maker. We'll just throw that in there. Why? Because you saw Mr. Bates. Yeah, Mr. What's it called? Mr. Mr. Who? Mr. 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 Banks. Mr. Banks. Mr. Banks. Yeah, that was a good movie. A kite maker. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's one in St. Augustine when we went. That Nobody. Five years it's not. Ago. No kite maker. Listed. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right. We want to talk about uh, this lady in Kentucky, Rowan County, Kentucky clerk Kim Davis. Mm-hmm has been jailed without bail since Thursday for refusing to allow her office to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Her attorney, Matthew Staver, says that even... Oh, come on. That even some people accused of murder are allowed to be free on bail while their trial is awaiting. Exactly. This is his statement. This woman who hasn't done any crime at all... Uh, is being held without bail for an indefinite period of time. In fact, one of the U.S. Marshals, when they were directed by the judge to take her into custody, told her he had never arrested somebody who had not committed a crime. Mm-hmm. Wow. Gosh. We'll continue when we come back. This is WOCA. 
The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunny to partly cloudy with a thunderstorm during the afternoon and evening hours today. A high of 85 to 88. Partly cloudy later tonight, a low 72 to 75. And we'll have some thunderstorms again during the late day hours tomorrow and Wednesday. Otherwise, it's partly sunny. High of 88 to 92 both days. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. A fast late race pit stop determines the winner at Darlington. I'm Joe Moore. This is the Coca-Cola Monday Morning Race Refresher. Brought to you by Coca-Cola. Open a Coke and enjoy the race. Coca-Cola Racing Family Road Trip. Driver's log, Ryan Newman here. It's 127 and we've run out of Coca-Cola. I'm really thirsty. Driver's log, 147. Still no Coke. And if I don't make it, tell my fans it was all Tony's fault. Driver's log, 159. We pulled over. I love Tony. I love road trips. I love everything. Coca-Cola, open happiness. Official soft drink of NASCAR. Carl Edwards was as far as two laps behind at one point last night in the Bojangles Southern 500 at Darlington. But he rallied back. His team did excellent work on pit road, and he drove to his first win at the track too tough to tame. We called Darian uh, Kenny Rogers because he's a gambler, and uh, somebody actually put a Kenny Rogers uh, poster up in the hauler. He, he's not scared to try things and make it happen, and everybody just did a great job tonight. My pit crew is amazing. I mean, these guys, they're unreal. They won the race for us, and um, just so proud to be driving this car for these people. That last run was a tough one, but Carl held off Brad Keselowski for the victory. Denny Hamlin came in third. Fourth went to Joey Logano. Fifth was Kevin Harvick. Then six was Kurt Busch, followed by Kyle Busch in seventh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. eighth, Martin Truex ninth, and Kyle Larson tenth. In the points, Kevin Harvick leads the way with Joey Logano, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Brad Keselowski, and Jimmy Johnson. That's the top five. Moving on to Richmond next week, the last race in the regular season before the chase begins. That's the Monday Morning Race Refresher. I'm Joe Moore on the Motor Racing Network. Putting the local back into radio. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. W-O-C-A. News. Variety. Information. Now. Keep your arms and legs on the inside at all times. Visit the W-O-C-A website at www.woca.com. The most trusted name in news, Fox News, every half hour, only on 96.3 FM, 1370 AM, The Source. All right, 12 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this morning. It's Labor Day. We're talking about, gosh, we've got a few different things we're talking about. What we started talking about before the break was the uh, lady up in Kentucky who is in jail and has no bail. In she's in jail because she refused to issue marriage licenses. Her name is Kim Davis from the, the uh, county called Rowan County in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Her lawyer is befuddled. He doesn't understand why. A, when she he doesn't feel in her his opinion that she's even committed a crime. Um, B, if if she has she's in jail, why hasn't she been allowed to be out on bail? Davis, who says same-sex marriage violates her Christian beliefs, is in control of her own destiny, Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz told reporters. He said she can get out immediately. All she has to do is resign her job and say, look, I can't do this in conscience, and because I can't do it in conscience, I really can't hold the job of being clerk. Yeah, it was easy to say, but the woman needs to have an income. Yeah. Davis is uh, being able to continue to serve as county clerk while refusing to issue marriage licenses would be comparable to a conscientious objector rather than declining to enter the army, joining instead, then refusing to follow orders, Dershowitz said. Yeah, that's 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 a good thing, because when you go to for for a job and you know what's expected of you and if you know you agree to it then all of a sudden you don't want to then you know that's 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 not being fair to the employer so here's the reason uh given by uh u.s district court judge david bunning as to why he didn't allow her to be out on bail he said he jailed davis without bail in an effort to force her to comply with the u.s supreme court ruling this summer legalizing gay marriage nationally Allowing her to pay a fine wouldn't have worked, Bunning said, because Davis has a large group of supporters willing to cover the cost. 
Staver, who is Davis's lawyer, is skeptical that Bunning ever even considered a fine, even though the gay couples seeking the original injunction against Davis specifically requested a fine and not jail time. Mm. Well, that's interesting. The temporary injunction ended at the day at the end of the day, August thirty first. Staver said, and at ten thirty the next morning, a motion for contempt was filed. Bunning set a one p.m. hearing, allowing only a five page response. Then the rules allow when the rules allow for twenty pages. When the hearing was held 48 hours later, Bunning already had the jailer, who had to travel from another county, in the courtroom ready to take Davis into custody. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Then when he read uh, he was going to confine her, he read from a prepared statement he had already written and didn't give penalties at a graduated rate. Jailing Davis was the judge's intent from the very beginning, Staver believes. University of Alabama School of Law Professor Ronald Krotosinski, Jr. Uh, says he was surprised as well. A judge usually starts with a fine first before moving into incarceration. The exception is with journalists who refuse to give up their confidential sources. Mm -hmm. Gosh. Staver is appealing the decision in the sixth, to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, but onlookers say they don't expect to see the decision overturned. Now, there's that loophole because when she signed up for the job, there was no uh, Supreme Court ruling for gay marriages. So she agreed to the terms of her, you know, employer and right. says, okay, I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing. But now that the Supreme Court ruled, the employer should have put out a new set of, of rules for the employees, including that one. Well, and then have everybody sign it. And then if she didn't want it, then she should have, you know, put in her notice and found another job somewhere. There you go. And, and on this Labor Day, that's oh. what we're talking about. We're talking about jobs. And, and uh, she took that job. But, she, but as you point out, she took the job knowing what it m entailed and had right. no, there was no ruling that there is now. But right. she needs the job. How can you tell somebody to quit a job? I know, you can't. You, 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 they changed you the rules on her. but Right, but then they should follow through and put out a new employee handbook, and then, you know, then if, if you don't agree with it, then you should, you know, find another job and then quit, quit that one. I mean, I can understand her dilemma. All right, there's another a couple of other jobs here that uh, we want to talk about. The job of mayor of Ocala and the job of city councilman for District 4. Both of those jobs are being uh, sought by uh, two people who don't have them, and mm -hmm. both of those jobs are wanting to be continued by the people who do have them. That's May right. Mayor Gwynn is the mayor. Mm -hmm. William Gilchrist wants to be the mayor. Next Tuesday, you voters will decide. Does Kent Gwynn be, remain the mayor, or does Billy Gilchrist become the mayor? Mm -hmm. Uh, John McLeod is the uh, city councilman for District 4. He wants to keep his job. Matthew Wardell wants his job. That's right. Matthew Wardell from the uh, Ocala Symphony Orchestra. He is yep. the conductor. Yes, he is. And I got that one right. Not the engineer, the conductor. No. <laughs> he drives that train. Yep, all four men have great qualities. Uh, one of the things about Ma Matthew... Um, is that he, he felt like it was not a good idea to build a, uh, a, a, a garage. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we haven't built it yet, but it was voted that we would. McLeod yeah. voted in favor of building the $5.4 million downtown parking garage. Yep. Um, Matthew Wardell says you don't spend $5.5 million on a perception problem. He says parking studies show that there is already enough parking space downtown. Mm -hmm. He said he would have supported the parking garage only if it could have been tied to a specific new business coming to the area or if it could be shown to generate new retail stores or businesses. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, good for him. He's, he's, he's addressing the issue. He's not just saying something generic. Uh, does anybody want to comment on these these guys? Um, I don't have a whole lot of information about uh, the mayor or the mayor wannabe. Mm -hmm. uh, other than, you know, I respect both. I respect all four of these guys, by the way. Oh, yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. They all contribute to things. War, uh, Matthew place. Wardell said the city went into a deal. Uh, hold on, let me make sure I got this right. McLeod voted in favor of incentives to retrofit the Sprint building into condominiums. Mm -hmm. uh, he said no other developer was interested in taking over the Sprint building. 
We need two things downtown. This is from the Star Banner. He said, we need a parking garage and a place for people to live. Once that is done, McLeod said, more development will follow. Given that business in many cities have fled their downtowns, most cities now have to incentivize businesses in return. But Wardell said the city went into a deal with the wrong assumptions, such as thinking the Sprint building property was worthless. The city had appraised the property as having a value of $0 because the cost to demolish the Sprint building would have been about $800,000, $800,000. Uh-huh. So there's there's uh, two guys kind of uh, trying to get your attention as to w- what they would do. The, the things we're talking about um, are kind of said and done already. The Sprint building is, is almost, I don't know how much it's done, at least 50%, right? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, and I guess the parking garage is a done deal, so th- we really need to be talking about the future. Yeah, exactly. During uh, McLeod's first term, the council made a strong move to attract the New York Yankees farm team, a move that withered when the county commission declined to put a sales tax referendum on the ballot. Uh, Before that was over, the city spent $300,000 in land options. Yep. A lot of money. Uh, Also, um, let's see. I'm getting all this from the Star Banner article, so thank you, Fred Hires. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Uh, if re-elected, McLeod promises to emphasize efficient government and downtown economic development. Marth- Matthew Wardell, very successful with creating the Riley Arts Center out of the old Tuscaloosa um, Auditorium. Yep, he spearheaded the drive. Very successful there. Hardly any taxpayer dollars. He got it all from t- private funders. There you go. Anybody, any opinions on those two things? Okay. Uh, yeah, but all uh, four men, they're all good at what they do. And, it's Labor Day. And they all have a passion for the city of Ocala. So you have to hand it to them. It's tough. So anyway, the sample ballot is as simple as a sample ballot can be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got two yeah. people running for mayor, two people running for uh, District 4 City Council. And by the way, if you go to votemarion.com, the, uh, uh, some of the voting precincts have changed. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, there were 20 voting precincts in this election. And there you go. So you got to go, oh. go on. If you don't know your voter precinct, that's the way you go. Now, I know you don't vote because you don't live in the city limits. Right. But I still have an Ocala address. That's where I have the issue with. I, even though, you know, I live outside of the city limits, people with the Ocala address should be allowed to vote because, I, you know, I put money downtown. I frequent the stores and everything. And yeah. What the mayor does affects me. What the councilman affects me. So, but that's another issue. All right. And I do have one fun thing um, before we end this half hour. I told you that today is National No Bake Cake Day. Yes. I promised you a recipe. Yep. Here we go. Okay. First of all, I have a question to ask you. Is Kahlua uh, an alcoholic beverage? Yes. It it's is. It's really okay. good, too. So, this cake requires the no bake cake. Uh-huh. It requires um, cookies mm-hmm. and cream and Kahlua. There you go. So, here's what you need you need eight ounces of Kahlua, uh-huh. two boxes of chocolate wafer cookies, okay, and two pints of heavy cream. Okay. I'm there. You pour the heavy cream and the Kahlua into a large mixing bowl. Mm-hmm. Then you whip the Kahlua and the heavy cream together until stiff peaks form. Okay. You make whipped cream out of it with the Kahlua mixed in. Yep. Then you place wax paper strips or, or parchment paper strips around the edge of the plate so the edges stay clean. Okay. 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 I guess I don't know what that means. Then yeah. you dollop the whipped cream onto each cookie, gluing, in essence, the cookies to the plate as you go. Okay. You take a cookie, you put some on it, you push it down. Okay. When you have completed a layer of cookies, you start stacking another layer on top of those ones, mm-hmm. uh, brick style, so they're not directly on top of them. That's Oh, the, how cool. The, yeah, you get it. How you get the clever. picture. Have you, to have a taste tester, you though, while you do it. Keep layering the cookies and the cream until you get the size and shape of a regular layer size, a layer cake. Mm hmm. Then you frost the outside with a layer of Kahlua whipped cream, because you're still going to have some left. Yep. Then you chill the cake in the refrigerator for 8 to 10 hours. Oh, that sounds The cookies yummy. will absorb the whipped cream overnight, <laughs> softening and expanding into cake. The cookies become wow. cake-like. Then you pull the wax paper strips from under the cake to clean up the edges. You crush the leftover cookies and sprinkle them on top of the cake. Slice and serve. That is wonderful. There's your Labor Day, also National No-Bake Cake Day recipe. (laughs) 
<laughs> it should be ready by t- in 10 hours. We'll be right That's back. Right. Passing from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Migrants continue to swarm into Europe after being held up in Hungary last week. Over the course of the weekend, some 14,000 migrants crossing from Hungary into Austria and on to Germany. Both those countries effectively opening their borders to take in migrants, including refugees from Syria and Afghanistan. Fox Radio's Simon Owen. Lawyers for Rowan County, Kentucky clerk Kim Davis have filed paperwork to try to get her out of jail for refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Davis was found in contempt of court last week. Carl Edwards gets his second win of the season, holding up Denny Hamlin at the Darlington Raceway. All the guys, uh, nobody gave up tonight. We were two laps down, and we, we fought back hard. It's a huge win for us. I mean, Southern 500. The race lasted almost five hours with 18 cautions. Hamlin was second. Joey Logano was third. Fox News, we report, you decide. There's more to Fox News Radio than meets the ear. Go behind the headlines and join the conversation on the hottest stories of the day on the Fox News Radio Facebook page. Be a part of the Fox News Radio Facebook fan community. Post comments and tell us your opinions. See behind-the-scenes photos and videos and post your reactions to the stories that matter to you. Click the like button on Facebook and connect with breaking news and features like Fox in the Fast Lane, House Call for Help, and more. Go to Facebook.com slash Fox News Radio. Weeknights, we're busting out a brand new lineup. First, market fraud, government abuse, corruption. At 5, nothing's off limits on money with Melissa Francis. Then, from bloated bank fees to consumer scams. At 6, Jerry's exposing the issues impacting your wallet. Plus, get smart market insight and trusted analysis you won't find anywhere else. At 7, Lou Dobbs is all business. And the first and last name in business, Cavuto. Shedding light on the biggest stories, making headlines at 8. Only on the Fox Business Network. Giving you the power to prosper. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. This is a public notice. Local residents can now save thousands of dollars on their next car, truck, or SUV. It's not a tent sale. Because no tent is big enough to hold this many cars. It's OcalaForSale.com. Say goodbye to sticker shock. OcalaForSale.com has thousands of vehicles with no stickers at all. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. Prices and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer upcharge. Undercoding was proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, this is Becky at Hello, Gorgeous Salon. Summer's almost over and fall's just around the corner. It's time to get that new look started. Let's get rid of those sun damaged ends and faded out color and get into something rich and vibrant. Humidity is not your hair's friend. It causes your hair to capture moisture and leaves it looking dry and unhealthy. Hello Gorgeous is a certified Brazilian blowout salon. We can tame those locks, leaving your hair healthy and shiny with a Brazilian smoothing treatment. And whether you're going on a job interview or out on a date, your hands do a lot of talking. Manicures are a must. Hello Gorgeous is a full service salon, so let us help you make a great first impression. Call us today to set your appointment at Hello Gorgeous. Our number is 352-351-5358. Again, that's 352-351-5358. Hello Gorgeous is conveniently located in the heart of downtown Ocala, right next to the historic Marion Theater. Hello Gorgeous. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. Never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results. And all but given up on my sex life. Then, I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow! They made a new male out of me. 
feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Male treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Male will help you. Call New Male Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. Five minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Labor Day morning. Galen Unold is working as he drives. He's, he's, when, you, when you're going a commute from Atlanta to to that, mm-hmm. That's working, even though you're driving, right? Yeah, right. Galen, of course, was up in Atlanta the entire week, I think, for uh, yep. Dragon Con, and we'll uh, check in now with him to find out how it all went. Good morning, Galen. Hey, good morning, Larry, Robin. How are y'all? Good. What time did you get on the road this morning? Uh, about 5.30. How is the traffic this morning? There's no traffic at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it go? How was your How was your weekend? Uh, you know, it's uh, just hectic. It's just uh, busy. It was a lot of fun. Um, through a lot of donors, got the the. It ends today, so the blood drive starts in about an hour. But uh, I'm heading south, so that's good. No, oh, okay, okay. So uh, is Dragon Con over with now, or is is today the last day? Uh, well, today is the last day, but there's not much going on. I mean, there's a lot of people who are just uh, travel day kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. There's some things going on in the morning, but uh, for the most part, it's over. Oh, okay. So today being Labor Day, um, we were looking at some things about jobs. I have the top 10 worst jobs, and I'll tell you who decided mm-hmm. that. But uh, real quickly, before we before you give us the blood report, um, uh, the phlebotomist salaries in this country, according to Glassdoor.com, the average salary for a phlebotomist is $31,897. The lowest salary of a phlebotomist in this country is $26,000. The highest is $43,000. Does that seem does that seem right to you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And again, we you know it's it all depends on what setting you're in, and what kind of hours you're working, et cetera. So where does Ocala yeah. fall on this? It doesn't. It says Ocala area NA. I guess they don't have the uh, information. Yeah, they probably don't do the stats. I mean, I'm, I, I, you know, I don't know what phlebotomists make. I mean, I know what our staff make, but we're we don't really they're phlebotomists, but they're really donor services staff because they do a whole lot more than just phlebotomy. I mean, they do all the interviewing physical stuff right, right. that we have a lot more SOPs to follow so it's a it's a little different so they, are they making more than uh, I mean on, on average I'm not asking for a specific problem I'm looking at the hourly salaries at different phlebotomists some make 14.47 an hour some make 13.69 mm-hmm. an hour 10.70 an hour in one 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 blood yeah, bank again it depends on it depends on how long they've been with us and what they're trained on but uh, yeah I mean between Ten to uh, fifteen dollars is a is is our range somewhere mm-hmm. in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you have to start somewhere. I mean, you can't give a a, a huge salary to a beginner. So ten dollars seems like a great one for beginners, and then it's up from there. Uh, here, the average for life salary. I just typed in life salary. It was actually here. Okay, so the average phlebotomist salary in life is thirty one thousand eight hundred ninety seven dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it all depends. And again, you have to. That's that's for all three states. So, uh, it's it's. So Atlanta would be paying it, more yeah. than Ocala, and. Uh, actually, it's no. We have a we ours is the same across all three states. Oh, really? Say is, is you were saying Florida, and that's Florida, Georgia, and ours is Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. A conductor or, or an engineer on a train. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on an Amtrak here. What did I say? It was 80 something thousand dollars? Yeah. Average. Average. 80 something thousand dollars to drive yeah. a train. But you yep. have a 12 hour day. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to remember, it's not, it's, again, it, there's a lot of training that goes into that. It's not like you just step off of the oh, yeah. uh, oh. Out of classroom into an engineer. So they've probably been doing it for years oh, and years. Well, so. d- don't, don't interpret my bringing it up to be astounded i think that's a fair salary in fact mm-hmm. it seems kind of low for somebody who's yeah. who's responsible for 400 lives every time he drives across yeah. the country exactly true yeah yeah well that's the passengers and then there's the staff on the train also yeah so. and then if something happens to, to the train you're you're responsible so is he the, the boss 
Is he the boss? Like on the train, if you're if you're if you're the one like changing the beds and everything, is the engineer, the guy who drives the train, is he your boss, or is there somebody else on the train who's your boss? I have no idea what their infrastructure <laughs> or what it looks like. No idea. All right. No All right. Uh, so the blood supply should be pretty good because uh, Dragon Con was successful. Yeah, I mean, shockingly, we're uh, we really need A negs right now, and we need O negs. We you know, we're just we just cannot collect enough A negatives lately. So um, just get out there and give to get the wife to donate blood. So it's just been crazy. Man. So we used a lot of blood over the last three days. I, I will tell you that we were wow. looking at the blood usage yesterday, and so I guess it's. Not, yeah, whatever. It's horrible. Um, it was a fire. That's horrible. Yeah, it's just a lot of usage. Uh, usage was way up. So it was a bad wreck on on the turnpike in Lake County. A baby died. Mm. Two adults died. It was one injury, and it's just oh my and that's God. just and that's just the one with the fatality. The highway yeah. patrol doesn't yeah, typically we had bad weather up in Alabama, which was the, the the roads were pretty bad on. Oh the really? Drive, apparently, so uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it was a it was a bad weekend. Uh, and it's not over. Today is Labor Day. It's a, yes. it's still travel yeah, day. Yeah, today's when you know a lot of people will be traveling back home. So if you're out and about, make sure you're safe. Right, before I do the uh, the sponsor with Pen Flooring, let me take a phone call. I have somebody waiting already a little while. Good morning. You're on the air with Galen. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, 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 to simplify it, some the uh, the engineer sees to the operation of the locomotive, and the conductor sees to the operation of the uh, the train uh, setting on set, getting the passengers on and off at their proper stops on a freight train seeing that the the proper freight cars uh, are uh, taken off the train in the proper places and new freight cars are added to the train in proper places that's you know, that that's basically what happens oh really so the engineer is only in charge of the engine the, the conductor yeah. is in charge of everybody else right so he's the boss of the 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 guy who's fluffing pillows he's the boss of that guy okay all right thank you jim bye I actually thought of Jim when this subject came up. Yeah, he Our, takes a train. All right, he this, s- I want to take a train. <laughs> yeah, I know, you've got it all planned out. <laughs> all right, this segment with Galen Unald and Life South, get the uh, blood report from Life South, is brought to you by Penn Flooring. They sponsored this, so thank them for that. If you are re- uh, remodeling your home, Mm-hmm. Beautify it from the floor up. They've got some beautiful options over there, beautiful choices. They've been doing this for over 25 years. They know their stuff, and they got some beautiful stuff. The showroom, where you can see it for yourself, is at 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge that we call the McKay-Williams Bridge. Now, there's, there's not a big enough sign to really make everybody aware that that's the name. That's why I do this. Yes. I want you to know the name of the bridge. <laughs> uh, anyway, Penn Flooring is who you thank for this segment with Galen Unold and Life South and... So how many how many more hours be ahead of you before you're back home? Uh, about two and a half. Oh, okay. Two and a half. All right, so I have the top ten worst jobs in the country. Okay. Let's do it. Now this is from a um, a group called CareerCast. They are a career advice and salary listing website. Uh, they are owned by a classified advertising company called Adicio, and they evaluated 200 jobs that had the most employees in the United States, according to the Labor Department, and they used a formula that took into account income, growth potential, um, the degree of competitiveness, the amount of public contact, physical demands that included crawling, stooping, bending, work conditions like toxic fumes and noise, in addition, they took uh, they looked at the stress levels of each job, the travel requirements, the deadline issues, the physical risks, and uh, whether the workers or their colleagues' lives are put at risk on the job to come up with the t- list of the worst mm-hmm. jobs. So, ready? Number 10. Yeah. Number 10, worst job in America, Jim Penna, <laughs> is mail carrier. Oh, wow. Gosh. Mail carrier. Gosh, well, they got to put up with a lot. The average income of a mail carrier is $41,100 a year. That's the average. The median is... They do get great benefits. So. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do get great 000. benefits. So the average is lower than the median. Anyway, mm-hmm. the, the median is 51790 yeah. The average is 41100 okay. Uh Let's see. It says, despite the, the sometimes monotonous routes, inclement weather, and physical strains of the job, the human connections m- many mail carriers establish can make it worthwhile. 
Mm-hmm. There you go. You get to know your people, right? Yeah, you do. Very, very friendly. Nice. Nice opportunity if you're a social person. The number nine worst job in America is firefighter. Yeah. They make 45000 really? 45,000, well, well, probably I, because of the risks. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, it takes a physical toll on your body and everything, but... Uh, it's a highly you know, hazardous you job. Firefighter, they it's the greatest job they've ever had. Oh, I... I it is hazardous. Oh, gosh. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I think that's probably absolutely true. All right, we'll if take you a look. put everything you actually did on the uh, job description, nobody would apply. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll be right back. Hold on. Well, then then voting is no accident. Sunny to partly cloudy with a thunderstorm during the afternoon and evening hours today, a high of 85 to 88. Partly cloudy later tonight, a low 72 to 75. And we'll have some thunderstorms again during the late day hours tomorrow and Wednesday. Otherwise, it's partly sunny, high of 88 to 92 both days. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Maggie Johnson. Are you in need of custom screen printing, embroidery, or promotional items? Then look no further and come visit the brand new Legacy Team Sales. LTS is conveniently located off 17th Street next to Armstrong Homes in beautiful Ocala. We offer the best prices and highest quality products for your company, team, school, or nonprofit. Whether looking for screen printed shirts, embroidered polos, or travel team uniforms, you'll be sure to find it at Legacy Team Sales. Come visit our new 27,000 square foot facility. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff will assist you in every part of your custom purchase. LTS carries the hottest brands in the industry like Under Armour, Russell, Mizuno, Asics, Badger Sports, Gildan, Pacific, Ogeo, and many more. At LTS, screen printing embroidery is done in-house and we guarantee customer satisfaction. Stop by, give us a call, or check us out on the web at shoplts.com. Remember the name, LTS. Hello friends, this is Avilio Silvera inviting you to the 23rd annual Silver River Friends of the NRA dinner. Our upcoming charitable banquet is on September 10th, 2015 at 5.30 p.m. And this year at a brand new location, the Circle Square Cultural Center at On Top of the World. The $50 per person ticket gives you access to games, a live auction, silent auction, raffles, prizes, and a whole lot of fellowship and fun, not to mention a seafood and chicken dinner buffet. You're going to want to be at the Silver River Friends of the NRA dinner on September the 10th at Circle Square Cultural Center. You can call Connie Davis at 352-239-0711. Again, that's Connie Davis at 352-239-0711. This is our charitable fundraising for the year so that we can empower the next generation of defenders of the Second Amendment. Palm Garden of Ocala is hosting Chats at the Garden, and you are invited to attend. On Thursday, September 10th from 2 to 3, Dr. Erica Olstein will speak about Eastern medicine and acupuncture. Palm Garden is located on the corner of 27th Avenue and 34th Street. Chats at the Garden is free, and light refreshments will be served. For more information, call Palm Garden at 854-6262. That number again, 854-6262. All right, 18 minutes. It's after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning into The Source, WOCA. Galen, you know, on the phone from live south, and we went into a break. Just It just happened all of a sudden there without without any smooth transition. All right, so you, everything else is still with you, okay with you, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I might be driving again on, on the, let's see, Wednesday. I'll be getting a car tomorrow. Replace the one that Uh-oh. got ruined by the cow. Yeah. I'm excited Hi. about it. Congratulations. Yeah. All right, so firefighter, let me tell you, this is the uh, ninth worst job in America, according to this uh, report, and it says when you put on the uniform and jump into the fire truck, you know that every day you go to work can be your last. Um, firefighters typically earn $45,250 a year, which I'm thinking it's less than that in Ocala. They work more than 40 hours per week and um, they have to save lives seven days a week. Yeah. They face one of the highest injury rates across all occupations. In in uh, his many years as a firefighter, uh, Mark Triglio, director of strategic campaigns for International Association of Firefighters, has fallen through floors, tumbled downstairs, and had a roof collapse on him. Oh my gosh! Wow! No wonder those have, guys are training all the time. Every, have you noticed that every firefighter has like three jobs? 
You ever notice that? Because they're, you know, they're on two, off three, or whatever like that. It always seems like a firefighter has like two or three jobs. Ah, oh, wow, yeah. Just once again, you have to you just admire what they've chosen to do for a living. Yeah, and they're and they're you know training all the time. I mean, they're doing whatever they do to to stay in shape so they can help other people. All right, number uh, eight, the number eight worst worst job in America according to CareerCast. Uh, it's taxi cab driver. Oh. Their average... Yeah, I just would not want to do that. $23,100 yeah. a year. That's the average. Yeah, just stuck in a car. And <laughs> like you. you don't really want to talk to, and it just always stinks in a cab. If grueling, yeah. gru- grueling hours, obnoxious passengers... Wow. And then you do nothing for the next hour, and then you know. It's Not to uh, mention that competition yeah. is getting tough because of Uber and Lyft. Uber. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So you think about it. You, 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 everybody thinks Uber is a good idea, but when you use Uber, you're taking a, a, some money away from a taxi cab driver who. I don't know. Yeah, if you if you've used Uber, you'd be oh okay. I like Uber. Well, Uber is. Oh, like, you do. Uh, you like Uber. Yeah. U- 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 Uber's yeah. like uh, McDonald's and Burger King. I mean, you can't just have a, a monopoly on okay. something. Good. Well, I won't That's argue. what I think. You win. Anyway. You're, you're right because you win. I mean, you win because you're right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, both of you. I mean, it sounds like you're. I was trying to make a case for the taxi drivers, but you're both right, so. Well, the problem is, is taxi drivers have to follow rules that the Uber drivers do not. That's. Uh, so you can't really compare it because it's unfair competition. So I understand why the taxi cabs are upset, but uh, it may also be time for them to adjust and adapt and kind of, you know, get a little more modern. But uh, Uber's really, really simple to use. It's really simple did to use. Did you use it when you were in Atlanta? No, you had a car. So I've did. used it in Atlanta. I have, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right, number seven of the top ten worst jobs in America is corrections officer. Oh. They make average of $39,000 a year, uh, but the work environment is tough. The patrons are even tougher. <laughs> patrons. Oh, of course. <laughs> Those bad like guys. They, tips. they don't make any money on tips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's considered one of the riskiest... Op- the cab driver gets tips, right? Right, right. right. It's, cons- and it's all and it's all undisclosed income, probably on a cab driver. Whereas, you know, correctional officer, you don't get tips, and it's all the government sees it all. That's right. So it's considered one of the riskiest jobs. Wow. I would think so. Yeah, I mean, you're 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 surrounded by people who, for the most part, have been at least they've been proven guilty, have already committed a crime. So it's so they've broken that threshold before, so they're probably willing to break it again. Yeah. I bet the uh, the corrections officer watching over that lady in in mm-hmm. Kentucky. I bet you he's saying, "Oh, this is an easy client." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's not going anywhere. The, the clerk who wouldn't issue them the gay marriage certificates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, the number yeah, s- six good. worst that's job. You made Dragon Con over that, and I was like, "You did okay." I wasn't even sure what I was arguing about. <laughs> Here's what I said. I said, you know, I said, she, you know, by law, she has to follow the letter of the law. She should have just, she should have just quit. And the lady started yelling at me. It's like, that's right. That's right. And I'm like, okay, so why, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> and I said, I said, yeah, I know. I, I said, yeah, I, I think I said something like, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I know that the, the majority of the people in Kentucky are against gay marriage, but she had to follow the law. And she is ordered by court order to follow the law. And, and she just started yelling at me. And I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, I've got to get away. I, I don't know what this is about. I don't know what started all that. You know, it's what? Like, I, I agree with you. I don't understand what why she was yelling yeah. I don't either, Larry. That's my whole point. <laughs> well, <laughs> I just I just was like, okay, all right, for being a blood donor. <laughs> yeah. Well, the story this morning is not the fact that she was arrested, but the fact that they didn't o- offer her bail. She's she's still in there. Yeah, that's wrong. That's the story this morning that she did, she didn't have bail. She's still in there. A, a, a murderer would have been out on bail by now. Oh, sure. Yeah, I I I think it'll be a really really quick trial. I mean, I don't think there's a lot to it. I mean, she broke the law. That she admittedly broke the law. I mean, there's not much to it. 
so. All right. The number six worst job in America. You disagree with the law, but you can't disagree with this, that she broke the law. So. That's right. Exactly. Next job. Next job. Worst job. Next worst job is photojournalist. Photojournalist really? for a newspaper. What? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, for a newspaper. It's not like it's Life Magazine back in the 60s, is it? It's you know, where you're traveling all over the world. You know, your your local newspaper is like, okay, ribbon cutting. Click. <laughs> okay. That's horrible. Uh, but, uh, it's true. The average salary for a photojournalist is $29,300 a year. Wow. Uh, the rewards come with risks. CareerCast says its research shows photojournalists typically earn less than $30,000. I just had that. Okay. But the uh, report says... Uh, they observe and capture history as it unfolds, but the assignments, which include shooting wars, civil unrest, and natural disasters, can be hazardous. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, I guess that's not your local paper at that point. And if you're, let's be honest, if you're going into a war zone, you're going to make more than $29,000. Well, Doug, you know, let's be honest. <laughs> Doug Engel was in the mud, though, at the Habitat for Humanity volleyball. He was in the mud. So he yeah. Got, he yeah, was yeah. in the mud with the. <laughs> Number, our, our photojournalists are great here in this town. The right. number five worst job in America is broadcaster. Oh, <laughs> and? Why? Because you sit down all day and talk? <laughs> you earn $29,300 on average. That's true. Really? According to this? Yes. Gosh. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, consumers are getting more of their news online, and radio and TV stations yeah. are being replaced. Uh, the research. F- yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, I'll give you a perfect example as a Dragon Con. Okay, so I did probably seven or eight interviews while I was at Dragon Con. And of those uh, interviews, I had three blogs, right, where somebody was running a blog and they came in and talked to me. I had three podcasts and I had one TV show but the TV show was more like uh, public access than it was anything else really so and I think mainstream media as we know it especially on the TV side is going down and I'll give you an example my kids don't watch TV they, they watch their tablets they and, and they watch everything online and it's very specific to what they want to watch at that time so if they want to watch Spongebob, they just watch Spongebob. They don't wait for Spongebob to come on TV. They just on demand. So it's, uh, and I think that's kind of the way our our world is going, is that wow. yeah, you're going to watch yeah. what you want to watch when you want to watch it. It is, so. it is weird that it's, it's, they consider it worse when they're considering these things. But one of the things that makes it worse is the fact that the stress level created by constant deadlines. Mm-hmm. That's what they say. Yeah, yeah well, I you mean, do every day. But you're a celebrity <laughs> at some point, yeah, it's, too. It's, I mean, you know. Anyway, so this is... There was what they say. Number four, worst job in America is cook. Head cook. $42,400. Like a line cook? I guess. A head cook at a restaurant. Uh, the, um, the cooking profession must be able to manage a kitchen, a kitchen, control the quality of food, keep up with the incoming orders, and coordinate with front-of-the-house staff to ensure customers are satisfied. It's a recipe for stress. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> All right. And you got to be able to cook because, like, in some of those uh, restaurants, <laughs> you, you cook a- everything from uh, breakfast to uh, dinners. And so you've got to be able to cook everything. The number three. It's important that if you're a cook, that you can cook. <laughs> yeah. I'm, right, I'm right. going to agree with that. 24 100%. hours a day. All right. Number three. Worst, you have to be able to cook if you're a cook. Worst job in America. Number three, to be an enlisted military person. Oh. The average income is $44,300, and the stress level is high. Um. Oh, yeah, because you're fighting for our world and, and you're, you're away from your family. Base pay for an active duty Army private with less than two years of training is thir- $18,378 oh, wow. yeah. a year. That's, that's a, I mean, when I, was, when I was an E-1 and I went, you know, and I joined the fleet in the Navy, I was making like 16000 But, yeah, that was so far on the bottom of the food chain. Yeah. Gosh. And, and, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of, I mean... I got a lot out of that 16000 though, too. I mean, you don't have to pay for anything. So there's all your food and board is, is taken care of. They give you your uniform. Um, 
You know, they give you training. You don't have to pay for your training. We got forty seconds. Let me uh, you let get me to hang out with your friends. Let me tell you the top two. Let me tell you the top two. I won't go into detail. Yeah. Number two is lumberjack. Oh. Thirty-four thousand a year, I am a and the worst job you in America. Eat a lot of pancakes, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the worst and downy sauce you get all the paper towels you want. The worst job in America, according to CareerCast, is newspaper reporter. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, that's Thir- because they're going out of business. Thirty-six thousand dollars a year. Galen, Holy be wow. careful driving home. Real quick, do you know where the blood mobile is today? Yeah, I do. It's a PDQ today on two hundred. So please stop by and give to get the wife. Be careful. Get some rest when you get home and enjoy your family. Yeah, we'll see will. you tomorrow. All right, bye, y'all. All right, bye. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Migrants continue to swarm into Europe after being held up in Hungary last week. Over the course.